Don't believe this myth about procrastination. Many people think procrastination is just laziness or lack of discipline, but that's far from the truth. In reality, procrastination is often tied to perfectionism, fear, and overwhelming emotions. It's something most of us struggle with, and if you want to break free from its grip, you need a new approach. That's where the ancient wisdom of Stoicism comes in. If you want to overcome procrastination and start making real progress in your life, you need to embrace the Stoic mindset. Progress over perfection, action over hesitation. The best part, it doesn't require any drastic life changes. Instead, it's about shifting your mindset and taking small, consistent steps toward your goals. In this video, we're going to dive deep into Stoic wisdom to uncover why we procrastinate and, more importantly, how to combat it every single day. By the end, you'll have practical tools to overcome procrastination, stay on track and take charge of your life. Ready to stop putting things off? Let's get started. 1. Progress over perfection. Stoic wisdom in overcoming procrastination. Imagine the moment you wake up on a weekend, with the morning sun streaming through your window. You've got a full day ahead, but instead of leaping out of bed with a plan in mind, you find yourself reaching for your phone. Maybe it's Instagram or TikTok, or perhaps just the comforting scroll through the news. Hours slip by, and before you know it, the day is half over, with nothing significant accomplished. Yet, that small voice in the back of your mind keeps whispering, you should be doing more. Sound familiar? We've all been there, standing at the crossroads between action and avoidance, knowing what we should do, but feeling stuck in a cycle of inaction. But what if I told you that overcoming procrastination isn't about getting everything perfect from the start? Instead, it's about making progress, little by little, every day. This is the heart of Stoic wisdom. In Stoicism, the focus is not on grand leaps, but on daily improvements. The great Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Stoicism doesn't ask you to be perfect, but to strive for progress. Each day, by taking small steps, you are forging a stronger will and building resilience, moving closer to the life you want to lead. Procrastination isn't a battle to conquer overnight. It's a journey of steady, mindful progress. Now, as you hear these words, maybe you're smiling, recalling a moment when you finally broke through that procrastination barrier. It might have been as simple as cleaning out that cluttered room or starting a fitness journey. There's joy in remembering those moments when you took action despite the urge to delay. That joy is your signal that you are capable of change. The wisdom of Stoicism is there to remind us that progress is made one step at a time and each small victory builds the foundation for bigger successes. But here's the core of it. Procrastination isn't a reflection of laziness or lack of ability. It's an opportunity to reshape how we approach life's challenges. When you look back on those moments of procrastination, it's not about guilt or self-criticism. Instead, it's about recognizing that each step toward action is a step toward growth. Stoicism teaches us that we have control over our choices. This includes the choice to overcome the barriers of procrastination. Think back to times when you hesitated not because you didn't want to do something, but because the weight of starting seemed overwhelming. Maybe it was that job application sitting in your inbox for weeks, or the hobby you've been meaning to pick back up. Now looking back, those memories may feel bittersweet. It's easy to feel nostalgic for what could have been if you had only acted sooner. But here's the thing, the past is not a source of regret, but a well of knowledge. The Stoics believed in learning from each experience, using each moment to guide future decisions. Every instance of procrastination is a lesson on what holds us back, and more importantly, what we can overcome. And this is where curiosity sparks. 
What would happen if you shifted your mindset from perfection to progress? What if, instead of waiting for the perfect moment to start, you embraced the first imperfect step? Think about it. What could you accomplish today if you set aside the need for perfection and simply began? The Stoics remind us that time is fleeting, but our ability to act is within our control. Could embracing this ancient wisdom unlock a new level of productivity in your life? The possibilities are endless. 2. Common Misconceptions About Procrastination and Productivity Now that we've begun to explore how Stoicism can help us overcome procrastination, it's important to address some of the misconceptions that often cloud our judgment and keep us stuck in that cycle of inaction. Imagine a time when you were sitting with friends, talking about life and the pressures of getting things done. Maybe someone joked about procrastinating or perhaps the conversation turned into a discussion about how busy everyone is these days. It's common to hear people equate procrastination with laziness or assume that constant busyness equals productivity. But what if both of these ideas are wrong? Let's break it down. One of the biggest misconceptions is that procrastination is simply a sign of laziness. We hear this all the time, don't we? That if someone is putting something off, it must mean they don't care, or that they're too lazy to get the job done. This couldn't be further from the truth. Procrastination, in reality, is often rooted in fear. Fear of failure, fear of imperfection, or even fear of the unknown. It's not that we don't want to succeed, but sometimes we feel paralyzed by the thought of not measuring up to our own expectations. Stoicism encourages us to dig deeper into our reasons for procrastination. It's not about avoiding the label of laziness, but about understanding that procrastination is a complex behavior. When Epictetus said, it is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters, he was pointing to the fact that our internal responses shape our actions. Procrastination is often a reaction to how we perceive a task, not a reflection of who we are as people. This hits home when you think about those times when you've put something off, not because you didn't want to do it, but because you were overwhelmed by the scope of it. Maybe it was a big work project or a life change you were nervous to start. Reflecting on those moments now, there's a sense of nostalgia, a feeling that perhaps you could have done things differently if only you had approached it with a different mindset. And this brings us to another misconception. The idea that productivity means constantly being busy. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to confuse busyness with productivity. But Stoicism teaches us that real productivity is about meaningful action. Seneca wisely noted, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. How often have we filled our days with small, unimportant tasks to avoid tackling the things that really matter? It's a way of keeping busy without being productive. Now, let's spark your curiosity. What if you changed your approach to productivity? What if you stopped measuring success by how much you do in a day and instead focused on whether the actions you take are truly aligned with your values and goals? Imagine the freedom that comes from not being constantly busy but purposefully engaged in the things that matter most to you. The Stoic path isn't about doing more, it's about doing what's right. So what steps could you take today to align your productivity with the wisdom of the Stoics. 3. Procrastination isn't laziness. The Stoic perspective. Let's talk about one of the most damaging myths out there. The idea that procrastination equals laziness. It's a misconception that many of us have internalized at one point or another, and it can weigh heavily on our self-esteem. But the Stoics offer us a different perspective, one that helps lift that weight and allows us to see procrastination for what it truly is, a complex response to the challenges we face, not a reflection of our character. Think about the last time you put something off. Maybe it was something important, a tough conversation with a loved one, 
or a major life decision. You didn't avoid it because you were lazy, but because facing it was daunting. Procrastination in this sense is often a defense mechanism, a way to shield ourselves from the discomfort of uncertainty or fear of failure. It's human nature to want to avoid pain, but Stoicism teaches us that avoiding discomfort only delays our growth. Remember those moments when you finally tackled something you'd been dreading? The sense of relief and accomplishment that came afterward was powerful, wasn't it? That's because, in those moments, you weren't lazy. You were simply overcoming a mental hurdle. Stoicism tells us that the hurdle isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign that we're confronting something meaningful. As Marcus Aurelius said, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. Procrastination is often the signpost pointing us toward what we need to work on the most. Reflecting on this idea can evoke a sense of nostalgia, especially when we think about missed opportunities. Maybe you're remembering a time when procrastination got the better of you, a chance you didn't take because you were too focused on the what-ifs and potential pitfalls. These moments aren't just memories of missed opportunities, they're lessons and the Stoic perspective invites us to use those lessons to shape how we approach procrastination in the future. But now, let's pique your curiosity. What if you stopped seeing procrastination as a character flaw and started viewing it as a sign that there's something deeper at play? What if, instead of criticizing yourself for procrastinating, you asked, what is it about this task that's making me hesitate? How might your relationship with procrastination change if you approached it with curiosity instead of judgment? This is the Stoic way, learning to understand and embrace our challenges rather than letting them define us. How would your life change if you could see procrastination not as laziness, but as an opportunity for growth? 4. Productivity and Busyness – Quality versus Quantity in Stoic thought. Let's take a moment to think about the difference between being busy and being productive. Picture this. You're sitting at your desk, juggling multiple tasks, emails and notifications, rushing to get everything done. Your to-do list is growing, and although you've been busy all day, there's still a nagging feeling that you haven't really accomplished anything meaningful. You've probably had days like this before, where busyness feels like an endless cycle, yet nothing significant moves forward. In our modern world, it's easy to equate busyness with productivity. We often hear people boast about how busy they are, as if a packed schedule is a badge of honor. But Stoicism offers a different perspective. The Stoics weren't interested in how much someone did in a day, but in the quality of their actions. It's not about how many things you can check off your list. It's about whether the things you're doing align with your values and contribute to your overall well-being. Seneca, one of the great Stoic philosophers, captured this beautifully when he said, It is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Stoicism teaches us that time is our most valuable resource, and how we spend it defines the quality of our lives. The goal is not to be constantly busy, but to be purposeful in our actions. True productivity is about focusing on what matters most and letting go of the distractions that merely keep us occupied. Now, think back to a time when you felt truly productive, when you weren't just busy, but deeply engaged in something that mattered to you. Maybe it was a personal project, a meaningful conversation, or a moment when you fully immersed yourself in your work. Those moments, though they may be fewer, stand out because they reflect the quality of your efforts, not just the quantity. The nostalgia of such memories brings us back to the idea that real productivity doesn't come from doing more. It comes from doing what's meaningful. You might remember days when you were incredibly busy, but those days probably blur together while the days when you accomplished something significant are clear and vivid in your mind. 
That's because those moments of true productivity are the ones that leave a lasting impact on our lives. And here's where curiosity steps in. What if you stopped trying to do everything and instead focused on doing a few things well? What if you prioritized quality over quantity in your daily life? Imagine how different your days would feel if you didn't measure success by how busy you were, but by how much value you created with your time. The Stoic way teaches us to pursue purpose, not just activity. What could you achieve if you started living this way, focusing on meaningful actions rather than filling your time with busyness? The potential is endless. 5. Motivation follows. Action taking the first step. We've all had those days when motivation seems out of reach. You wake up knowing exactly what you need to do, but the drive to actually start just isn't there. Maybe you've spent time waiting for that perfect spark of inspiration, believing that once motivation strikes, everything will fall into place. But here's a stoic truth. Waiting for motivation is a trap. In fact, motivation often follows action, not the other way around. Think of a time when you felt stuck, putting off something important because you just weren't feeling it. It might have been a project, a workout, or even a simple chore. You waited for the right moment, hoping that motivation would hit you like a lightning bolt. But then, something changed. You decided to take the first step. Maybe you just picked up the tools or started typing that first sentence and suddenly momentum kicked in. You began to make progress and the motivation you were waiting for finally arrived. That's because action generates motivation, not the other way around. In Stoicism, this principle is key. The Stoics believed that we shouldn't wait to feel a certain way before we take action. Instead, we should act according to our values and the emotions we desire, like motivation, satisfaction, or confidence, will follow. Marcus Aurelius, in his famous Meditations, reminds us, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. It's not about waiting for external forces to give us the drive to act. It's about recognizing that we already have the strength within us to begin. Now, Think about those moments when you overcame inertia. Maybe it was a time when you didn't want to go to the gym, but ended up feeling great after the workout. Or perhaps you were dreading a difficult conversation, but once you initiated it, the relief and progress that followed made you wonder why you hesitated in the first place. These memories are a powerful reminder that taking the first step is often the hardest part, but it's also the most important. Nostalgically, we can look back and realize that many of the things we delayed weren't as daunting as they seemed once we got started. The act of beginning itself dispels the fear, uncertainty and procrastination that often hold us back. Those moments when you pushed through and took action have likely shaped some of your most meaningful achievements. Now imagine how different your life could be if you embraced this stoic wisdom fully. What if, instead of waiting for motivation, you simply committed to taking the first step in everything you do? How might your daily life change if you trusted that action would bring the motivation you're seeking? It's a curious thought, isn't it? The Stoics challenge us to take control of our actions, knowing that by doing so, we create the conditions for the success and fulfillment we seek. What first steps could you take today that would set your progress in motion? Sixth, time management versus emotion. Management, addressing procrastination. We've all heard advice about time management, how to organize our schedules, prioritize tasks, and avoid distractions. But what if the real challenge isn't managing time, but managing our emotions? After all, Procrastination often isn't about a lack of time, but about avoiding the emotional discomfort that comes with certain tasks. Picture this. You've blocked off time on your calendar to complete an important project. But when the moment arrives, 
you find yourself avoiding it. You're not short on time, but the task feels overwhelming. Or maybe you're afraid you won't do it well. Instead of diving in, you turn to something easier, checking emails, scrolling through social media, or even cleaning the house. It's not that you don't have enough time, it's that you're trying to avoid the stress, uncertainty, or boredom that the task brings. In Stoicism, the idea of managing emotions is central. The Stoics believe that it's not the events themselves that cause us distress, but our reactions to them. Epictetus said, men are disturbed not by things, but by the view they take of them. In the context of procrastination, this means that the discomfort we feel about a task isn't inherent in the task itself. It's in how we perceive it. If we can manage our emotional response, we can break through procrastination and take action. Think about the last time you procrastinated. Maybe it was a report for work, a phone call you didn't want to make, or a creative project that felt daunting. At the core, it wasn't the task itself that was the problem. It was how you felt about it. Maybe you were worried it wouldn't turn out well. Or perhaps you just didn't feel like you had the energy to tackle it. These emotional barriers can be powerful, but they're not insurmountable. Looking back, we can feel a sense of nostalgia for those times when we let emotions dictate our actions. Perhaps there were opportunities we missed or goals we didn't pursue because we couldn't push through the emotional resistance. But nostalgia isn't about regret, it's about reflection. These experiences teach us that managing our emotions is key to overcoming procrastination. The Stoics remind us that we have the power to change our perspective and in doing so, change our actions. Now, let's get curious. What if, instead of focusing solely on time management, you started to focus on emotion management? How might that change your approach to procrastination? What strategies could you develop to deal with the emotions that hold you back? Imagine how much more you could accomplish if you learned to navigate the emotional landscape that often fuels procrastination. The Stoic mindset teaches us that by mastering our emotions, we can master our actions. How might your life change if you embrace this wisdom fully? 7. Perfectionism paralyzes progress. The Stoic embrace of imperfection. Let's talk about a word that haunts many of us. Perfectionism. It's that nagging voice in your head that tells you everything must be flawless before you can move forward. We're told to set high standards, to aim for perfection in our work, relationships, and personal goals. But how often does that pursuit of perfection end up holding us back? Imagine a moment when you've started a project. Perhaps it's something important to you, like writing a book, launching a business, or even just getting a personal task done. You dive in with enthusiasm, but soon, doubts begin to creep in. The more you work, the more flaws you see. You tell yourself, I'll get back to it when I figure out how to make it perfect. But the truth is, that moment of perfect never arrives, and you find yourself stuck in a cycle of endless revision, or worse, abandoning the task altogether. Stoicism offers a powerful antidote to this mindset. The Stoics believed that perfection is not only impossible, but also unnecessary. Marcus Aurelius wrote, You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. The Stoics didn't strive for perfection, they strove for progress. They understood that imperfection is a natural part of life, and that waiting for perfection often paralyzes us from making any progress at all. Let's look back on a time when you let perfectionism keep you from moving forward. Maybe it was a project you never finished, a skill you never mastered, or even a conversation you avoided because you didn't think you had the perfect words. It's easy to get stuck in that loop of almost ready. But when we reflect on these moments, we often realize that our fear of imperfection was the real obstacle. 
If only we had embraced the flaws and imperfections, we could have made progress, even if it wasn't perfect. Think about the times when you pushed through perfectionism, when you decided that good enough was good enough. Maybe it was a school assignment you turned in, even though you weren't completely satisfied, or a creative endeavor you shared, even though it wasn't flawless. Those moments are powerful reminders that progress, not perfection, is what truly matters. Now, imagine a life where perfectionism no longer holds you back. What if you could embrace the stoic wisdom of focusing on progress? What if, instead of aiming for flawless execution, you focused on consistent action, learning and growth? The idea might feel liberating, almost like lifting a heavy burden off your shoulders. You can achieve more, create more, and live more if you let go of the need to be perfect. What could you accomplish if you accepted that imperfection is part of the process? 8. Real Life Scenarios – Applying Stoic Principles to Overcome Procrastination We've explored the philosophical side of Stoicism, but now let's ground it in real-life situations. How can we apply these timeless principles to the very real problem of procrastination? Picture yourself in a familiar scenario, perhaps one you've encountered many times before. You've got an important task looming on the horizon, but instead of diving in, you find yourself doing everything but that task. You check your phone, tidy up your workspace, maybe even do some research on productivity hacks, but the actual work remains untouched. In this moment, it's not time or resources you're lacking, it's action. But here's where Stoicism can step in as a practical guide. The Stoics teach us that procrastination is often fueled by our emotions, fear of failure, overwhelm, or even boredom. Epictetus, a great Stoic thinker, advised us to separate the things we can control from those we cannot. You cannot control whether the task will be hard or whether you'll enjoy it, but you can control how you approach it. Let's think back to a situation where you finally overcame procrastination. Maybe it was a work deadline you'd been avoiding or a personal goal that seemed daunting at first. What changed? Chances are, you decided to take action despite the discomfort. You might have broken the task down into smaller, manageable steps. Or perhaps you reminded yourself of the bigger picture, why this task mattered in the first place. Once you started, the resistance you felt began to melt away, and the task became much less intimidating than it first seemed. These real-life scenarios are a testament to the power of stoic principles in action, when we approach procrastination with a stoic mindset, we acknowledge our emotions without letting them control us. We don't wait for motivation. We create it through action. We don't aim for perfection, we focus on progress. And most importantly, we don't let fear paralyze us. We recognize it, accept it, and move forward anyway. Now, let's get curious about how you can apply this to your current life. What tasks or goals have you been putting off? What emotions are fueling that procrastination, fear, self-doubt, overwhelm? What if, instead of letting those emotions control your actions, you embraced the stoic approach? Imagine breaking those tasks down, taking that first step and creating momentum. What would happen if you stopped waiting for the perfect moment and simply began the possibilities are endless, and the power to overcome procrastination lies in your hands. 9. Reflective questions to challenge your procrastination habits. Sometimes the key to overcoming procrastination lies in asking ourselves the right questions. Stoicism teaches us to reflect deeply on our actions, emotions and motivations. When it comes to procrastination, these reflections can help us uncover the hidden reasons behind our delay and guide us toward action. Let's start with a question that might seem simple, but can be incredibly revealing. What am I avoiding right now and why? Often, procrastination is a sign that there's something we're reluctant to face, 
Whether it's a difficult task, a fear of failure, or even the possibility of success, by identifying what we're avoiding, we can begin to address the root cause of our procrastination. Now, think back to a time when you procrastinated on something important. Maybe it was a challenging conversation, a major project, or a personal goal that felt too big to tackle. What were you really avoiding? Perhaps it was the fear that you wouldn't measure up, or maybe you were overwhelmed by the sheer size of the task. When we reflect on these moments, we often realize that the procrastination wasn't about the task itself, but about the emotions and beliefs surrounding it. Here's another powerful question. What small step can I take right now to move forward? The Stoics believed in taking action, even in the face of uncertainty or discomfort. By focusing on what we can do in the present moment, no matter how small, we break the cycle of procrastination. Instead of waiting for the perfect time, we create progress by taking that first step. Looking back, you might remember times when you overcame procrastination by simply taking one small action. Maybe you made a phone call you'd been dreading, or you started writing the first paragraph of a daunting report. Those small steps likely led to greater momentum, and before you knew it, the task became manageable. Nostalgically, these moments remind us that progress begins with action, not perfection. Now consider this final question. How will I feel once this task is complete? Often we get so caught up in the discomfort of starting a task that we forget the sense of accomplishment and relief that comes afterward. Reflecting on how you'll feel once the task is done can shift your focus from the immediate discomfort to the long-term benefits. This is a classic Stoic strategy, focusing on the end result rather than the initial resistance. Imagine applying these reflective questions to your life right now. What tasks have you been putting off? What are you really avoiding? And what small step can you take today to move forward? As you begin to reflect on these questions, you'll likely find that the barriers to action are more mental than physical. The Stoic approach encourages us to face these mental barriers head-on, challenging our procrastination habits and guiding us toward consistent, meaningful action. What insights could you gain if you started asking these questions regularly? How might your approach to procrastination change if you embraced reflection as a tool for growth? The answers lie within you, waiting to be discovered through the wisdom of Stoicism. 10. Action Steps Embodying Stoicism to Combat Procrastination Daily Now that we've explored the Stoic philosophy and examined how it can help us confront procrastination, let's shift our focus toward actionable steps, what we can do every day to embody these principles and make lasting change. It's easy to get swept up in the ideas, but Stoicism is a philosophy of action. The ancient Stoics believed that knowledge without application is worthless. Epictetus reminded us, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. So how can you start living Stoicism in your daily fight against procrastination? Let's begin with the most practical action step. Break your tasks down into manageable chunks. This might sound simple, but its effectiveness cannot be overstated. Many times, we procrastinate because we're overwhelmed by the enormity of a task. You've likely been there, looking at a long to-do list and feeling like the weight of it is too much to bear. But the Stoics would advise you to focus on what is directly in front of you. Marcus Aurelius said, do what is necessary, what the situation calls for, the smallest step towards your goal. Start by identifying the smallest, most manageable part of the task. Let's say you're working on a report for work or school. Instead of focusing on the whole project, zero in on the introduction. Rather than thinking of writing an entire essay, concentrate on crafting just the opening sentence. By narrowing your focus to something bite-sized, you reduce the psychological burden of getting started. 
Think back to a time when you used this approach successfully. Maybe it was cleaning your home. Rather than tackling every room, you started with just one corner or one section. Nostalgically, you might recall how that small start gave you momentum. How once you cleaned that one area, the rest of the task seemed less intimidating. The same can be true for any major goal or project. Breaking it down transforms a mountain into a series of small, achievable hills. Another essential action step is creating a system of accountability. The Stoics placed a high value on community and mentorship. Seneca, for example, often wrote letters to his friend Lucilius, encouraging him to stay on the path of virtue. He used these letters to reflect on his own actions and to help Lucilius do the same. You don't have to be a philosopher to follow this practice. You can create your own system of accountability by sharing your goals with a trusted friend, colleague, or even using tools like to-do lists and calendars to track your progress. If you've made it this far, drop a 100% in the comments. This shows you're part of the rare 0.01% who actually finish what they start, and that's no small feat. Overcoming procrastination is about more than just getting tasks done. It's about reshaping your mindset, taking consistent action, and embracing progress over perfection. You're already on the path to change, and with stoic wisdom, you have the tools to make that change last. If you're serious about transforming your life, don't stop here. Make sure to join our growing community by subscribing to the channel. We dive deep into actionable insights every week, helping you stay focused, disciplined and resilient. You're not just watching, you're taking steps toward becoming the best version of yourself.